mechanical properties, and they're always talking about yield strength and modulus and so on. And what you find in, in regard to strength is that, um, if you can see my pointer here, this very first part of the curve, this is where polymers are used. You don't design a polymer to be used past this point. Um, the rest of this, all this stuff up here is just a safety margin if something goes wrong. But in general, polymers are designed so that they only see a very, very small part of their overall strength. So sometimes it makes me laugh that people are obsessing about the yield strength going up and down by one megapascal. And really, it makes no difference because the polymer is not being used up there anyway. What we see here is that um, these red curves are brittle polymers like polystyrene or SAN. And as we go to the right, we've got more ductile polymers like polypropylene or nylon or, or LDPE. Um, so this last one here, this bottom curve, would be good for a cable formulation because it has a high elongation to break. And the total area under this curve, this, this rectangle that I'm tracing out, that's the energy to break. That's the total amount of energy needed to break your material. And that's quite important for some applications. And what's unusual for polymers, metal people don't really, um, they're surprised when they look at polymers because with metals you can put in all the numbers in the modeling equation and get out all the, all the answers, but it doesn't work with polymers because polymers flow slowly over time. Um, and creep, and so you can't just put in one, one number. You have to know the time-dependent behavior of polymers, and the really good suppliers like Borealis can help you with that. They can put in the time-dependent information and predict what will happen to your actual part and real use over time. Okay, next one. This is uh, something I found fascinating. This is the reason that polymers fail, and you can see that these mechanical properties are not the main reason that polymers are failing. Normally, people are designing the modulus is okay, the yield strength is okay. Most of those things are okay because those are the obvious and easy things to measure. And the reasons that polymers fail are completely different reasons. So we've got the UV attack, and that would be counted maybe by some additives from SIBA. Heat degradation, that's the same. You need the right stabilization package. We've got wear and abrasion, chemical attack. That might be 